Hi, now here's another video in my series on proof by mathematical induction where we're looking at proving the nth term in a recurrence relationship. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with recurrence relationships. If not, always check them out on my website. Okay, now for this example, we've got, or oh, given that the first term, u1, in a sequence is equal to 7 over 2. And the nth term, un, is equal to a half un minus 1, the previous term, plus n squared. And this is true for n is greater than or equal to 2. And what we've got to do is prove that the nth term, un, is equal to 2n squared minus 4n plus 6 minus half all to the power n. So, how do we do this? Well, I'm assuming you're familiar with the method of proof by induction where we check out that it's true for n equals 1 and then we assume that it's true for n equals some positive integer, say k, and go on to prove that on that assumption it's true for n equals k plus 1. And if that is the case, then knowing it's true for n equals 1, it must be true for n equals 2. And if it's true for n equals 2, it must be true for n equals 3, 4, and so on. In other words, for all positive integers n. So that's essentially how we tackle proof by induction. So let's get into this problem now. We'll just put up proof there, okay? Now for something like this, what we need to do, we've got the first term u1, it's 7 over 2. We need to work out what the second term is and check that we get in here when n equals 1, we get this term here, and when n equals 2, we get the second term. But first of all, let's just check out what we get for the second term when n equals 2. And because we're given this relationship here, this recurrence relationship, all we need to do is just substitute n equals 2 into here. So if that's the case, when n equals 2, we've got that u2 is going to equal a half of u1, 2 minus 1, u1, okay, and then plus n squared. Well, n is 2, so it's going to be plus 2 squared. Well, what is u1? Well, we're told that u1 is 7 over 2, so we've got half of 7 over 2, and then plus 2 squared, which we know is 4. And if you work this out, we've got 7 quarters plus 4, so that's going to give us 23 quarters, 23 over 4 for our second term. Now what we've got to do is check that this works in our formula here for the nth term. So let's just label this one, okay, so we can identify it. And so what we'll do is we'll check this out in equation one, check in one. So we're looking then for u1, when n equals one. So we've got u1 equals, well, according to this, it will be, 2 times 1 squared, let's just put that down. Put the working down just so that someone can see where we're coming from, that we haven't just made up the answer. So it's minus 4n, so that'd be 4 times 1, plus 6 minus a half to the power 1, n being 1. So what does this come to? Well, we've got 2 minus 4, which is going to be minus 2, plus 6, which is going to be 4. 4 minus a half is going to be 3.5, or 7 over 2. So that's good. That, it agrees with the first term there. We also need to check out the second term, u2. u2, according to this, is going to be 2 times 2 squared. So put that in, 2 times 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 6 minus a half all to the power 2. And if you check this out, we've got here 8 minus 8, so that's 0, 
plus six minus a quarter. Six take away a quarter is going to be five and three quarters or 23 over four. And that checks out with what we worked out up here. When n was two, we got that the second term was 23 quarters. So what we can see at this stage is therefore it's true for n equals one and n equals two. This is a bit unusual because normally we just have to show that it's true for n equals one. But we had to go on for this example to show that it was true for n equals two as well. OK, well, on that basis, let's just assume in the usual way that it is true for some particular value of n, some positive integer. Let's call it k. So assume true for n equals k. So that means that the kth term, uk, would be equal to 2k squared minus 4k plus 6 minus a half to the power k. So we'll just write that in, that the kth term, so therefore uk, okay, is going to equal 2k squared minus 4k plus 6 minus a half all to the power k. Now we've got to look at the k plus 1th term. So therefore, when n equals k plus 1, then what is the k plus 1th term going to be equal to? Well, u k plus 1, by this, what we're given here, u k plus 1, let's just write it in, u k plus 1 is going to equal half of u k plus 1 minus 1, so it's half of u k, the kth term. Let's just put that in, half u k plus, and then we've got n squared, but n is k plus 1, so it's all of k plus 1 squared. OK, we've got that then. So let's just come down here, see what we've got. So let's take our k plus 1 term again, u k plus 1. And we now have to substitute what we've assumed the kth term was, u k. We assumed up here that it was equal to this expression here. So we just need to substitute that in. So we'll put a bracket and we've got half then of 2k squared minus 4k plus 6 minus a half all to the power k. Because I've got a curved bracket here and brackets here, I think I'm going to take that out and we'll just put that in as a square bracket. It would look a lot better there. OK. And then we've got this last term here plus k plus 1 all squared. Right, next what I want to do is just start to expand this bracket out. Let's see what we get. Well half of 2k squared is going to be just simply k squared. Then we've got a half times minus 4k, so it's going to be minus 2k. Half of the 6 plus 3. Now when we get down to half times minus a half to the power k, it's obviously going to be minus, but we add the powers. Half to the power 1 times half to the power k is going to be half all to the power k plus 1. Then we've got k plus 1 all squared. Now I'm going to leave that unexpanded. Okay, k plus 1 all squared. Why? Because I'm looking ahead of the problem now. I'm looking at what we've got to show up here. And I can see that if we've got to prove this is true for n equals k plus 1, I'm expecting to see two lots of k plus 1 all squared here. And I don't really want to expand this out because I've already got one lot of k plus 1 squared here. So how am I going to get two lots of k plus 1 all squared. Well, this is where it pays to keep looking at what you've got to prove. And I can see that if I just push one in, let's just put another k plus 1 all squared in. 
I'm forcing the situation if you like okay so I've got a k plus 1 squared here and another k plus 1 squared there so I know I'm going to aim to get two lots of k plus 1 all squared but what does this give me if I square it out well it gives me k squared that's looking good there it gives me plus 2k now I've got minus 2k there so what I'm going to need to do to get minus 2k is now subtract 4k so I've got 2k minus 4k so that's going to give me the minus 2k and when I expand this I'm also going to get the 1 that is squared so that's going to be 1 and I need 3 so I need to put plus 2 in there so all of this is exactly the same as k squared minus 2k plus 3 if we were to work it out okay now I've got this term and I know that's looking good because I've got half to the power n and if n is k plus 1 I want this to be half to the power k plus 1 so definitely got something looking good there so we'll leave that alone half to the power k plus 1 and then we've got plus all of k plus 1 all squared so when we tidy this up now can you see we've got our k plus 1 squared plus another k plus 1 squared two lots in other words of k plus 1 all squared and when it comes to this these two terms I'm really looking for minus 4 bracket k plus 1 so why don't I write that in as minus 4 bracket k plus 1 and let's just investigate where this leads us to if we expand this we would get minus 4k that's okay and then we'll get minus 4 but we wanted plus 2 so we've got to add 6 to correct for that okay now we can just put in these last or this last term here and that's going to be minus a half to the power k plus 1 so can you see it works we've been able to show that it works for k plus 1 n equals k plus 1 so in the usual way all we've got to do now is just wind this up we've just got to say if true for n equals k then we've been able to prove that it is true for n equals k plus 1 and on that basis we know that earlier it was true for n equals 1 so since true for n equals 1 and n equals 2 we now know it must be true let's just write that in it must be true for n equaling 3 because we know it's always true for the next one up so it must be true for n equals 3 and if true for n equals 3 it's true for n equals 4 5 and so on so in other words we can summarize and say that that is therefore true for all positive n okay integers n n being a member of the positive integer set okay there you go so hope you've been able to follow that one and don't forget you can always check out my videos all the videos that i've got just by going on my website there's indexes there a general index and indexes for most of the examination boards that uh, we take okay